Welcome back. This section is going to be about functions. Functions are a specific type of relation, a more uh, restricted type of relation, and they are far more important for math analysis because of one special property. So let's jump right into the vocab. A function is a type of relation in which each input has exactly one output. So this is incredibly important. Um, if you remember in the last video or in class, we talked about relations where um, an input maps to an output, but there was no rule <coughs> about how many outputs one input could have. One different input, or one input could map to like five different outputs. That was no trouble. So in a function, each input has exactly, this is absolutely key, exactly one output. Now, that doesn't mean that two different inputs cannot map to the same output. So if you think back to those mappings we had, we had a list of numbers here, and we had a list of numbers here. So one of these numbers, each of these numbers in the input can only have one arrow coming out of it. Okay? But these numbers over here in the output, say we have you know 6, 10, and 25. These numbers here, they could have different arrows coming in. Like this could go here, this could also go here, um, this one might go there, etc, etc. So each input only has one output coming from it. That is absolutely key. But the outputs <coughs> could show up more than once. That's fine. The function has each input with exactly one output. Absolutely key. Okay, how, now there's two types of functions. There's a discrete function and a continuous function. Well, uh, the continuous function is continuous, which means it doesn't break or stop. So it's a, it's a graph of a line or smooth curve. So that means if you were to draw it in, you would never pick up your pencil. It's just one continuous smooth curve. There's no sharp corners. Um, there's well, Actually, there could be sharp corners, but we're not going to deal with those in Algebra 1. Uh, so basically, if you can draw it without picking up your pencil, then it is continuous. That's your, that's your go-to rule. Okay, discrete, on the other hand, it does not mean secretive. There's another English word called discrete that means secretive, but this just means kind of individualized, so to speak. So it's a graph of disconnected points. So, for example, if you were plotting something and you had a data point here and a data point there and a data point here and a data point here, and you don't have any information between the two data points, then this is a discrete function. And this happens uh, when you're doing, say, a science experiment and you measure and you take data. You're getting discrete data, whereas if you have an equation of something, then you have a continuous graph because you can plug in any possible input and get an output. But with a discrete function, there are only specific inputs that you have. Okay. Next, linear or nonlinear. This is exactly what it sounds like. If something is linear, when you graph it, it will be a straight line, perfectly straight. If something is nonlinear, when you graph it, it will not be a straight line. There are lots and lots of examples of nonlinear functions. One example is called a parabola. Uh, another example is called a sine wave, which looks kind of like this, and it repeats forever. So uh, in this class, we're going to be learning about just a few of these nonlinear functions, but we will spend the vast majority of our time dealing with linear functions. Now, how can you tell very, very quickly and easily by looking at a graph if it is a function or not? It's super simple, simple. You do something called the vertical line test. So if you graph something, it's only a function if and only if every possible vertical line crosses the graph once. So let me switch colors and draw in some vertical lines. Let's look at this one. If I draw a vertical line here, it only crosses once. If I draw one here, it only crosses once, and here, and here, and here. No matter where I draw a vertical line, it only crosses once. So this is a function. How about over here? Every vertical line that I draw only crosses once. Okay, how about a straight line? Absolutely. So all three of these that I've drawn so far are definitely functions. But there are some others which are not functions. What if you have a shape that looks like this? That's called an ellipse. Okay. If I draw a vertical line here, it crosses once here and once here. So this is not a function, because if I put this on an xy axis, this input value right here, it has two outputs. And remember that to be a function, each input can only have one output. So 
If I draw a vertical line that's representing a possible input, it's only supposed to have one output, so it can only cross the graph one time. Okay. Uh, if a graph fails the vertical line test, like for example this one, which here I'll write this, this is called an ellipse. This is something that models the uh, path of the orbit of all the planets around the sun, stuff like that. So ellipses are very, very important in math, but they are not functions. So if something is not a function, it's still a relation though. So if you have a graph of it, it's still a relation. All right, next one. The next one is the most probably useful in this actual math class. So this is called function notation. How do we write equations using this function notation? f of x is the output. This is absolutely key. And x itself is the input. This is not multiplication. So if you see f parentheses x, f of x is how this is pronounced. f of x. You say f then you say the word of, then you say the word x. So f of x. This right here is all one variable, and it is the output. And then x right here by itself is the input. So if I made a table of ins and outs, aka x values and f of x values, okay? my input, I can pick any number I want for x and I can plug it in. So let's just pick an easy one. Let's pick 1. Okay, If I plug in a 1 right here, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So the overall s value on this side is 3. So f of x, my output, is 3. This corresponds to a graph, the point over 1 and up 3. So this point right here is on this function. It's part of this function and you could write it in a table. What if I put, it, put in like a 5? I plug in a 5 as the input, which goes right here. Um, 5 goes here. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So 11. The way that I would write this is f of 5 equals 11. So this is my input, and this is my output. And then on this graph, I could go over to the point 5, and I'd have to go up 11, and there'd be a dot you know, somewhere up there. Um, okay? So, examples. Determine if a relation is a function, and lots of function notation. So, is a relation a function? Let me just, uh, I'm not going to use the book, but let me just draw some pictures here. Um, so, there's one. How about a sideways parabola? And how about a straight line going down? And how about like that? Okay. Which of these are functions? So again, to see if a graph is a function, we use a vertical line test. If we draw vertical lines in here, they are all crossing only one time. So this is yes. This one here, because it crosses twice, is no. This one here is a yes, and this one here, always crossing one time, this would be yes. Okay. You can also ask the same kind of question: Is it a is a certain relation a function? Uh, by looking at a table. Okay. So if you have a table, you want to look and see if the input value shows up more than once with a different output. So if I have five six, two one, and then five seven. Okay, this is my input and this is my output. This value of 5 is mapping onto a 6, but the input of 5 is also mapping onto a 7. So if you have the same input right here giving you different outputs, more than one output, then this would be no, not a function. Okay? Um, if you have a graph, if you have a, we won't worry about equations yet because we haven't learned about equations, but uh, by looking at an equation, there's ways to tell if something is a function. And then if you have a mapping, it's super easy to tell because one of your inputs here, like let's say at a 7, if it has two arrows coming off of it, then one input had more than one output, not a function. If each arrow has only one, if each number on your inputs has only one arrow coming out, then it's a function. Okay? And now we're going to do some function notation, most important of all. So say you're given a function f of x equals negative 2x plus 5. 
And you could actually be given uh, another function, g of x. Now, don't let this throw you off. The letter f here we use because it's the word function, uh, but it could be anything we want it to be. It's just a variable, an output variable. Uh, we could use g of x uh, to represent a different function. So maybe g of x is x squared. Okay, so you take the input, x, and you square it. Or here you take the input, you multiply by negative 2, and you add 5. So if we said, um, fill in this table, here's x, here's f of x, here's a 0, and here's a 3. Okay, so this means we're given the input of x, we want to find the output f of x. So we're only going to be looking at this function because we're looking for f of x. We plug in a 0 as the input, so we can write f of 0. That means we plug 0 in for x, and what do we get out? Okay, We plug a 0 in right here, so negative 2 times 0 plus 5 equals 5. So, input of 0, output of 5. We'll do plug in a 3. We can write f of 3. So we literally, we're just plugging in whatever we see as the x value in place of the x here and here. So f of 3, this is not f times 3, remember, it's just f of 3 equals negative 2 times 3 plus 5, which if we reduce that, that's negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So the point 0, 5 is part of this function, and the point 3, comma negative 1 is part of this function. These are our input values, these are our output values. Okay, likewise, we could ask, given x, find g of x. So if we're doing that, then we're asking about this function, we're totally ignoring this one over here. So we could say, what if we plug in negative 1 or a 4? Okay, g of negative 1 is how you pronounce that. g of negative 1 means plug negative 1 into this function is negative 1 squared. It's important that we plug it in for x. So if it's a negative number, we put parentheses around it, and when we square it, we actually get out positive 1. Likewise, g of 4 is 4 squared. Notice I put parentheses around these even, even when there's just one thing. Okay, 4 squared is 16. So this graph here, this g graph, would contain the point negative 1, comma 1 from the first input output pair, and 4, comma 16 from the second input output pair. And you can have all kinds of crazy functions. You can have one d of t is a really common function. What this stands for is output is distance, d, and input is t for time. So how far have you traveled in a certain amount of time? Okay, This could be like um, your car driving down the road, the distance as a function of time. Um, and you could have some equation, 2t plus 6 or something like that. Right. So I'm not going to do more numerical examples, but I just want you to get more and more comfortable with this idea. It's called function notation. You pronounce it d of t, or here we could go uh, h of p, h of p. So the height as a function of the position or something like that. So the input and output variables, you can choose letters that actually represent a physical problem or you can choose f of x or g of x to represent some arbitrary function uh, with some arbitrary input x. Okay, So we'll do lots and lots of examples of function notation in class. Um, just come in, make sure you've got the vocabulary, and let me know if you have any questions.